USC's Drake London is a wide receiver projected to go high in the first round of this year's NFL Draft. Is he a good fit for the Jets and Zach Wilson? We'll talk about that on today's episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, March 25th, 2022, nine months till Christmas. I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com, thanking you for making the show your first listen or your first watch every day. We're free and available on all platforms. If you like what you see or hear, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube and like what you see, please give this episode a thumbs up. It helps other Jets fans find the channel. Well, today our Prospect Friday series returns. I had, at previous points in the offseason, been profiling an NFL draft prospect each Friday. We kind of stopped the last couple of weeks because of free agency, but we can begin again today. And the prospect I'm going to talk about is Drake London out of USC. The Jets obviously have a need at wide receiver. In fact, the Jets showed you that they think they have a need at wide receiver when they tried to trade for Tyreek Hill earlier in the week. That move fell through. Tyreek Hill ended up in Miami. So the Jets, the Jets still have a need at wide receiver. And they have two first-round picks, two high first-round picks, two picks in the top 10, which makes it natural to wonder, will one of those picks be used on a wide receiver? I think that there's a pretty good chance of that at this point. And Drake London is a name that frequently comes up in these discussions. So I'm going to talk about some of the things I think Drake London can do, some of the things he's not so good about, and whether or not he's a fit, and if he is a fit, where he could slide in to this Jets roster. And we'll begin with the positives. We'll begin with the things Drake London brings to the table. And I think that there's no question that he's just a big receiver. And if you followed Joe Douglas's tenure with the Jets and also with the Eagles, and I actually wrote an article on this a few weeks ago, Joe Douglas really likes receivers with physical traits. And sometimes that means big guys, sometimes it means fast guys. Drake London's a big guy. He's a big guy. He's 6'5", around 220 pounds. He, he's like your prototypical, if you were like building an X receiver and you're looking for like the physical tools, I mean, that's Drake London. He's, he's a big receiver. And not only that, he's a very good guy at contested catch situations. He, he's a guy, and you know, he, he does it in kind of an interesting way. He's really good at kind of boxing out corners. So he, you know, if the ball's up in the air, he can go up and get it. He's what you might call, I don't know if an eraser is the right term, but if you have a quarterback that likes to throw up 50-50 balls, and like the, the quarterback who always comes to mind to me is Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers just loved to throw balls up in the air. So what did the Chargers do through his entire career? They went out and got guys who could just go up and win contested catches. You know, from early in his career, Vincent Jackson, all the way to the end of his career when they got Mike Williams. They just liked to go, go get guys who could go make catches, go, go up and win the ball in the air, high point the ball. And Drake London, probably as good at any, as any receiver in this year's draft class at doing that. And beyond that, I mean, I think he actually, like, profiles, even though I just talked about how he goes up and, you know, wins balls in the air, he kind of profiles to me as, like, a possession receiver, kind of a chain mover in an offense like the Jets run, where the Jets like to get the ball out quickly. And where Drake London may fit the Jets, not just, you know, throwing the ball down the field, but he could be a guy who, you know, hits those short passes, uh, because, you know, he's, he's a big target. And, you know, when you're talking about possession receivers, when you're talking about the short game, sometimes you're throwing into traffic. So you want a big target to throw to. So he fits there, you know, off the line of scrimmage again because of his size. It's always difficult to say how things are going to translate to the NFL because you're playing against bigger, stronger players. But it really did not seem like he had many issues against press coverage when I watched him in college. You know, he his footwork seems decent. Obviously, he's big, so he's very difficult to, to get your hands on, to control. And, you know, it's always, as I said, it's always difficult to know exactly how this is going to translate to the NFL. But given his size, you know, if this was a smaller guy who was, you know, constantly using his hands, you'd wonder a little bit. You'd, you'd have to do more research on how strong his upper body is, how strong his arms are, how strong his hands are. I think a guy at Drake London's size is going to be difficult to, to jam at the line of scrimmage. And that's one of the reasons, again, why 
I think he's kind of a prototypical X receiver. But beyond that, Drake London's a tough guy to bring down. And it's interesting. Guys do it this different ways. I think, you know, I talked about Garrett Wilson a few weeks ago, wide receiver out of Ohio State. And he's difficult to bring down because he's so sudden and he just changes direction so well. Or a guy like Traylon Burks, who, you know, there are some, now some questions about him after not performing quite as well at the combine as people were expecting his athletic testing. But I watch him on the field. And, I mean, he looks like he looks explosive. He looks like a guy who can get from zero to 60 very fast. Drake London's tough to bring down in the open field. And I think there are kind of two reasons for that. Again, one of those is just he's so big. And that's really kind of the defining feature of a Drake London is just he's enormous. He's a, you know, he's so strong and, you know, a guy that big, he's tough to bring down. But beyond that, what sticks out to me about him is he just got great balance. So it's like if you knock him down, you're not going to, if you try and knock him down, you you know, you, you knock him off his center of gravity. He'll regain it very quickly. He's got great balance. So for a big guy who's not really a burner, who's not really an explosive athlete, at least doesn't appear that way on the film, he actually is a guy who has potential as somebody you can manufacture touches for, somebody you can maybe throw a few screens to, try and get him the ball in space. I mean, he's he's not he doesn't do it exactly like Elijah Moore does, you know, the, or Braxton Berrios. These are guys who are quick, guys who are fast. It's not the same as you would do it for a guy like a Garrett Wilson or a Traylon Burks. In fact, I've talked about this role the Jets kind of have in their backfield or in their receiving core that they try and get a receiver. There's like one receiver. It was Elijah Moore when he was healthy. And then when he got hurt, Barrios slid into this role where you essentially just, he's the guy you just try and manufacture touches for to make things easy. You throw him screens, you know, you get him in motion, get him on the move and get him the ball in space. I don't know that Drake London fits that role the way maybe a Garrett Wilson or even a Burks would. But he's the type of guy who you can throw the ball out to and ask him to make a play. And that makes him more dangerous because, again, because he's so big, he's t- difficult to press. But if you play off him, I mean, sometimes sometimes when you see a receiver get the ball in space, as I'm describing, it's not always a designed pass play. Sometimes the, the corner is just giving too much cushion. And there's a play known as a smoke route, which is essentially... A run play is called, but the quarterback sees that there's too much cushion at the line of scrimmage. So sometimes he'll flash a little signal, maybe a hand signal to the receiver, and the quarterback's essentially changing the play at the line. As soon as the ball snapped, everybody's expecting the run. The running back's expecting to receive the ball. The offensive line is run blocking, but the quarterback throws it out to the receiver and you know picks up a couple yards. So you know, London's the kind of guy who I think can help in this area. Maybe he can help a little bit on this. And it's always, you know, there's always a little bit of a question, a guy who is just bigger than everybody and tougher to, tough to bring down, how much of that is going to translate to the NFL. But I think there, because he's just got so much balance, it's not just that, he, he, that he's running through arm tackles. He's got just such, and that's, that's the thing that like, I was, I remember like watching this over and over and I'm trying to figure out like why he's so tough to bring down because he obviously like, isn't that, you know, he's not that elusive. He doesn't make guys miss. Yeah, he's big, but like there was something else, and I finally figured it out. It's just he, he's got that balance, and that's that's the thing that makes him dangerous. And that's that shows you, like, in some level, he can he can challenge all portions of the field theoretically because of his ability to go up and win contested balls in the air. And a guy like him, you know, we talk about separation, and we're going to talk about separation ahead, and how that's one of the concerns. But a guy who's as tall as him, as big as him, you do, you view separation differently for somebody like that and I, I i always think of the receiver position as there being like this like size to separation ratio because if you're a small guy you got to create very good separation because there's not a big throwing lane whereas if you're bigger you don't need to create as much separation you you can go up and, and win you're, you're kind of like a human throwing lane if you're bigger than everybody and you have the ability to win contested balls so you look at drake london and there are some tools that he brings to the table I think there are obvious reasons he's being considered here with a top 10 pick, but no prospect is perfect. And there are some pretty pronounced flaws in Drake London's game. And these are some of the flaws that make me have doubts about whether he's the right guy for the Jets. And I'll explain to you what those are ahead here on this Friday episode of Locked On Jets. It is spring. That means the NFL draft is coming up. And it also means we're in the middle of March madness. We had some great games last night, some upsets, as a couple number one seeds fell, Duke survives, Villanova survives, 
And tonight we've got the St. Peter's Peacocks, the local team, looking to become the first 15 seed in history to go to the Elite Eight in the NCAA tournament. And you should know that from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, that BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sporting sports wager wager information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. Thank you again for making Locked On Jets your first listen every day, and make sure you're following Locked On NFL. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we're breaking down USC's Drake London. We're bringing back Prospect Friday from now until the NFL draft. I'll be giving you a prospect every Friday, giving you my thoughts on them. And it's very timely, talking about the wide receiver position. It's been a topic all week for the Jets. It's been a topic I've been talking about all offseason. If you've been a listener, you know that I would have preferred the Jets go the veteran route in in, uh, addressing the position. Actually, I kind of wanted them to get a veteran and, and draft somebody early and bring them along slowly, but... Jets seem like they're going in a different a different way, and I, I would expect at this point to either at 4 or 10, or if there's a trade down, one of the picks the Jets make early to be a wide receiver, and it could very easily be Drake London, and I explained why in the first segment. There are lots of tools he brings to the table, and Joe Douglas, as much as anything, if you've followed his history, he likes physical tools as a wide receiver. Now, he's willing, you know, he's willing to give up some speed if you're big, and he's willing to give up some size if you're really fast, but... He wants something to stand out about you. And Drake London, clearly his size stands out about him. But there are some flaws to his game. And listen, I think it's obvious, and this is not necessarily like a criticism of him, and it's not one that's really going to move the needle. It's just something you need to be aware of. It's A guy his size, he brings certain things to the table. You know, he can win contested balls, and he's very good at that. But somebody like him, he, he's not going to move that great, and he's not going to change directions that great. I know, like, I've heard people say, well, he played in the slot in college. Well, you know, this is not a guy you're going to stick in the slot and run a bunch of the five-yard option routes. So when we talk about where he fits on this team, and that's a topic we'll discuss in the third segment. But this guy's not going to have the biggest route tree. And I think he's going to be somewhat limited in that regard. And that's not the end of the world, because there are lots of great receivers who have a very limited route tree. They tend to be the bigger guys. You know, Calvin Johnson, and I'm not saying Drake London's going to be Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson only ran a handful of routes. It wasn't a guy who had like a 20 route tree. So you have to keep that in mind is that with the size, which obviously brings a lot to the table, he's not going to be running a terribly diverse route tree. So, I mean, there's every team in the NFL has a package of, of plays for like a big slot receiver. So you could, you know, you'll see Drake London in the slot from time to time, but I, I don't see him like living in the slot permanently the way some, the way some projects. I think he's more limited. I, I think he's going to be on the outside. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being on the outside. Beyond that, I mean, listen, I don't think he's that fast. And, you know, he didn't test at the combine. You know, we don't really have accurate athletic numbers on him. So all I can go on is based on what I saw. This was not a guy who was running past people. You know, this was not a guy who was, who was a burner. You know, sometimes you see guys who are big, who are also extremely fast. And listen, that's not necessarily the end of the world that he's not. Listen, just because you're big and fast doesn't mean you're going to be a good receiver. Stephen Hill is a perfect example. Ten years. Can you believe, it? Can you believe it's ten years since the Jets, Jets wasted the second round pick on Stephen Hill? So I don't want to go crazy on 40 times. But again, it's another thing to point out. It's another thing that you say, what can a player do? What can't he do? There's no perfect prospect. There's no prospect who's beyond redemption. Drake Lund does not doesn't seem that fast. You don't see him get great separation. You know, you don't see him cut well. Um, you don't see him change change direction all that well. And again, that goes back to the size. And beyond that, there, there, you know, there's one thing that I kind of noticed when we talk about the lack of general separation Drake London gets. And this is something I just picked up on because I was trying to figure out what was going on there because I know, you know he's not super fast, but like it seemed like there was something else. And I finally figured it out last night as I was doing like my final review, getting ready for this episode. He makes his moves too early. I mean, whether you're talking about a double move, whether you're talking about the way he stems a route and then makes a cut. And I don't know, maybe this is the part of the USC playbook. Maybe this is the way he was coached. I mean, sometimes you don't get the greatest. Um, it, sometimes sometimes the way your college team requires you to play doesn't necessarily accentuate your, your skill set. But 
When you play the wide receiver position, typically what you want to do is you want to get as close to the corner as possible before you make a move because that means you don't he doesn't have the reaction time to adjust to what you're doing. So if you like make your cut two yards in front of the corner, he's going to have a good angle. He's going to be able, to, first of all, to see it. He's going to have time to respond. He's going to be able to take a good angle to you. So what you want to do, you want to be like as close to him as possible before you make your move, whether it's like a double move, whether it's, again, you're breaking inside, whether you're, you're stemming your route and you're, you're faking outside, cutting inside. He does this too early. I mean, that's what, and that's I think, is something that the Jets can work on. And that's something that may help to some extent explain the lack of separation. Again, a guy at this size... Not a guy who necessarily needs a ton of separation, but it's something that can be improved in that area. I don't know that you're going to be able to fix speed. I think he's, you know, he's a guy, if he's going to be a deep threat, you're going to you throw just throw him the ball up and trust him to win it. Other than that, he's going to be a possession receiver. But I, it really was kind of pronounced when I saw, like, how early he was making his moves on corners. He doesn't, you know, he's still kind of learning how to set corners up, still kind of learning how to manipulate them. So... And in some ways, that's, again, that's not a bad thing. That's something that's actually good because it shows you that his ceiling's maybe a little bit higher than this, the player we saw on the field. It's, it's always kind of the paradox of the draft. A fully developed player is great because you know what you're getting, but on the other hand, the ceiling's not as high because he's already, you know, you've already done all the things that could, he's already improved on all the things that could be improved upon. Whereas a player who's not as polished, you know, you, you don't know what you're getting, but you also see, you know, if he improves this area, he could be a better player in the pros. And I think that that's one thing, definitely, as I watch Drake London run his routes that can be improved upon. So there it is. I've told you the things that I think Drake London brings to the table. I've told you the things that I think aren't so great about his game. But does he fit the New York Jets? Is he a guy that makes sense for them at 4 or 10? I'll give you my thoughts on that ahead on this Friday episode of Locked on Jets. You know, the Jets give their draft picks rookie contracts. The terms are pretty much set in advance. They get money, but they do not get Built Bars. And that's unfortunate because Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. There are so many delicious flavors, mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. And new for this month is white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time. And if they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it. It will be delicious and it will be good for you. Most bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then they figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. So if you want to check out all the options available to you, go to Built.com. Again, that's Built.com, B-U-I-L-T.com, and use promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. Promo code LOCKED15, that's one word, no space, L-O-C-K-E-D, number one, number five, for 15% off at Built, B-U-I-L-T. Dot com. This is the Locked On Jets podcast on this Friday. We are profiling USC's Drake London today. It's part of the Prospect Friday series where each Friday between now and the draft, I'll tell you my thoughts about a prospect who could interest the Jets. And Drake London's a guy who is obvious as a Jets target because they need help at the wide receiver position. He's one of the top wide receiver prospects in this class. Does he fit the Jets, though? And I think the answer is conceivably. And it's difficult to say definitively whether or not a player fits what the Jets want to do because I'm kind of going off what they did last year. And that's not factoring in the fact that Mike LaFleur may want to change some aspects of his scheme. But I see a pretty natural fit for Drake London on the Jets. I think that he, you know, he adds an element that's kind of been lacking. You know, Corey Davis was supposed to be a great contested catch guy and really did not work out that way last year. So if you want to push the ball down the field, somebody to win down the field, Drake London's a great option for that, conceivably. And, you know, I, I'm, I've am i become more skeptical of the idea of players being red zone threats because I, one of the things, that I, the more I've read about the NFL, the more I come to realize red zone performance is kind of random every year. But there's no doubt that, you know, when you get into the red zone, the quarters become very tight. You know, there's not a lot of space to operate. So a bigger guy you can throw the ball up to on a fade can help you, and that's that's a role Drake London could play. I think this is an offense that is going to rely on, you know, the, the, the LaFleur offense seems like it's kind of based on what San Francisco did, and that's a, an offense where the ball gets out quickly. You want guys to make plays after the catch, and I talked about how Drake London, first of all, is a big target on short, short routes, but he's also a guy who can make things happen with the ball in his hands. You know, he's not not a guy who's necessarily going to be explosive. He's not. I'm not sure he's going to be a guy who's going to be a threat to take the ball 75 yards all the time, but 
He's a guy who can break tackles. He's a guy who can who can run through arm tackles. So in that sense, like maybe he's a good fit for the Jets. And, you know, maybe he's a good complement to what Elijah Moore brings to the table. And if you're talking about trying to draft receivers that can grow with Zach Wilson, then you kind of have like a good mix there. You'd have guys who have very complementary skill sets in Moore and London. And then you still have Corey Davis in the mix, which uh, we'll see what Corey Davis can do for you. But I think there's a definite fit there if that's the direction the Jets want to go in. And again, as much as anything, it's not so much do I like this guy. It's not so much do I think this guy's better than that guy. It's more a question of what the Jets want. If the Jets want a certain aspect at the wide receiver position, Garrett Wilson might be their guy. If the Jets want something else, it might be Drake London. So I think either of these guys could make sense for the Jets. You know, I think probably now we're looking more at 10. I, I th- you know, I've been talking about these receivers in the past Prospect Friday shows about a possible trade down. I, mean, I think now we're probably talking 10. I don't think the Jets have the luxury of trading down at this point if they want to get a receiver. And I think the Jets probably at this point are going to have to get a receiver in the first round. And it could very well be Drake London. So those are my thoughts on this prospect. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. That's all for today, however. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, if you enjoyed the show, subscribe to it and leave it a good review if you're listening on a podcast source. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up. Helps the channel out, helps other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll be back on Monday to talk more Jets.